Example 176. 276 people were asked to pick the city they would most like to travel to when given the three choices, Rome, Paris, and London. This experiment was multinomial in nature. Test the claim that the proportion of people who choose Rome equals the proportion who will choose London equals the proportion who will choose Paris. All right, so in this problem, they're asking us to test a hypothesis. You can see that here because it says test the claim. And it's about proportions, and it looks like it's more than two proportions compared. So let's start out with that. We're going to start out by writing the claim. And the claim is that the proportion of people who wish to go to Rome is equal to the proportion of people who wish to go to Paris is equal to the proportion of people who wish to go to London. Now, HO and HA will follow from that. So HO is going to be the same as the claim here because the claim is filled with all these equal signs, right? So the proportion of Rome is equal to the proportion of Paris is equal to the proportion for London. And HA is just going to express the idea that at least two of these will differ from each other, right? At least two will differ, differ significantly, right, from each other. Okay, so you can find a pair of them that are not the same as each other. One thing I want to talk about before we move on is this because we're going to need it in this next step, actually. The three proportions are supposed to be equal. We also are told it's a multinomial experiment. Multinomial experiments have this property that the sum of all the probabilities or proportions have to add up to 1, or 100%, in other words, right? They have to add up to 1. Now think about this. If all three of these are the same and they add up to 1, don't they all have to be 1 third then? Doesn't that make sense? I think it does, because imagine if they're all the same, then they're all like the variable x, for example. x plus x plus x, so 3x is added together equals to 1. That's 3x equals to 1. If you divide both sides by 3, you would have x is equal to 1 third. So in other words, all these proportions must be 1 third. That's the only way they can all be the same and yet still add up to 1, or 100%. Okay, so we have now our claim, we have our HO, we have our HA. Let's move on to the next step, which is the data step. And in the data step, we're simply going to talk about a relationship or an idea here for this problem. And that's going to be the idea of the expected value. We're going to need to figure out the expected value for each cell. Expected value, when you learned binomial probability, was just the formula n times p. I don't know if you remember that, but that was the sample size or the number of trials times the proportion or the probability. So here it's the same thing. So for example, if you wanted to know you know, if you want to know what's the expected value for the Rome cell, in other words, you want to know how many people you expect to end up in that cell, you have to think of the formula n times p r in this case, so n times rho r. Now, we're also going to put a little subscript here of 0. What I'm putting there by putting the subscript 0 is to remind you that this proportion is going to come from our hypothesis H O. We're going to assume that the null is true for this purpose. And remember, the null is saying the same thing here as the claim, that basically all these proportions are one-third. The end for the problem is 276. That's your sample size. So I think we can safely say that for Rome, the expected value is 276 times the proportion, which should be one-third. And that, of course, has to be equal to 92, right? So this is your expected value for Rome. Now I want to remind you that since the proportions are all the same, since the sample size would be the same, for each of these other calculations, the expected value for Paris, it would also be 92. And the expected value for London would also be 92. Now we don't always have this statement that all the proportions are equal to one another as our null hypothesis. Only when that's true can you say that they're all the same. However, sometimes they'll specify different values for them, and we can still run that test. That test is called the goodness of fit test. That's basically what we're doing here, right? Whenever you have this one-way table structure and you're comparing proportions, we're going to do something called this goodness of fit test. And in that process, occasionally, they'll all be claimed to be the same, and sometimes they'll be claimed to be specific values. You will put whatever proportion you need to for the specific expected value that you're working out. In this case, since they're all the same, I can assume they'll all turn out to be the same answer, 92 in other words. Okay, so the data step is done. We've got the expected value for each of the three cells. Our next step then is to come up with the test stat, right? This is our fourth step always, to come up with the test stat. And in this case, we have a formula. The formula is going to be chi squared, that's our test stat symbol. It's going to be the summation 
of a fraction that involves the observed values minus the expected value divided by the expected value, but the top part of this fraction is going to be squared. And then we're going to sum this from the first cell up to the last cell. In this case, that's three. From the first cell to the last cell, we'll cover three different cells. And we'll put little subscripts here for that. The I here is just indicating, you know, first time we go through, we'll have one fraction where it's the observed for Rome minus the expected for Rome divided by the expected for Rome, and then square the top, of course, plus, you know, so on and so forth. And we'll do that again for Paris and London. So in this case, it's going to be three fractions added together. Let's just talk about what this test stat is going to do for us. It's going to basically compare what we see in the actual data versus what we expected to see here in our data step. We figured out what we expected to see. For example, for Rome, we expected to see 92 people say they want to go there. Well, guess what? Our observation was 92, so that lines up perfectly. So let's work out our, our formula, and then we'll talk about that a little further. So to work out our formula, we're going to have three fractions. We're going to have one for Rome, one for Paris, and another one for London. So I'm just going to put that above this so you know what each of these represent. The first fraction will be the observed value for Rome, which is going to be 92, minus the expected value for Rome, which is going to be 92. Then you're going to square that and divide by the expected value for Rome, which is 92. Then you'll add to that the fraction for Paris. Now, Paris's fraction will be its observed value, which is 108. That's what you saw when you actually went out and conducted the survey, minus the expected value for Paris, which is 92, divided by 92, the expected value for Paris. Then we'll do the same for London. It's going to be the observed value for London, what we saw for London, which was 76, minus what we expected to see for London, 92. Square that and divide by 92. So these three fractions added together will give us our test stat. Now, when I go to do this test stat, you'll notice the first one is going to be 0, so I'm not going to bother with that, because 92 minus 92 is 0. That whole fraction will become 0. So I'm just going to type in 0 for that one plus. And then this one I could do in my head, 16 squared over 92, right? I can just put 16 squared. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the whole parenthesis just so you see how it's done. It'll be 108 minus 92, close up the parenthesis, square it, divide by 92. Then you're going to do plus, you do the same thing for this one, open parenthesis, you'll put 76 minus 92, close the parenthesis, square it, and divide by the 92. All right, when you're done, you get the answer 5.565, 5.565. That is your test stat. Our question is always going to be, is this test stat large? That's how the chi-squared test stat is set up. It gets large when there's a discrepancy between the null hypothesis and what we saw in reality. So what I mean by that is you look at the way this is structured, it's set up so that we have an expectation subtracted from an observation. So what this is saying, like look at the Rome case. We expected 92 people to say they wanted to go to Rome. 92 people said they wanted to go to Rome. It's a perfect match, so this gives us zero contribution to chi-squared here. That's important because that's saying, hey, look, whenever the two match up, that's going to be in defense of HO, basically. So you're not going to give anything to the chi-squared test stat. So what this is indicating is when things don't match up, you should add something to the test stat. And that implies that a large test stat means that there's something wrong with HO. So let's look at this one. HO tells us we should expect 92 people saying they want to go to Paris, but 108 actually say they want to go to Paris. That's a difference of 16. When we square that, it will not be zero, obviously, and it's going to contribute something to the chi-squared test stat. Turns out this difference is also 16. If you think about that, you'll understand why, but don't worry about it. The point is that this is 16. When you square it again and divide by 92, you're going to contribute something towards the test stat because there isn't perfect agreement between HO, what we expected to see according to HO, and what we actually saw in the actual data, right? So because of that, we get some test stat here that's you know, semi-large, but the question is, is it large enough for us to say we reject the null hypothesis? So let's do that then. In order to figure that out, we have to do the critical value step. Now normally for the critical value step, we draw the chi-squared curve. It's just a visual aid. You, didn't, you don't need to do this, but we're going to do it here. We draw the chi-squared curve. It's kind of a right-skewed curve. The alpha goes all in one tail on the right-hand side. Um, the alpha for this problem isn't stated, so I'm going to assume it's 5%, 0 0.05. 
And remember, there's going to be a degrees of freedom for the problem, so pay attention to that. The degrees of freedom is defined as k minus 1, where k is the number of categories you have. We have 3, so our degrees of freedom, of course, will be just 2 here. So our chi-squared critical value is going to be 0 0.05 comma 2. Let's go to the table and look those values up to see what chi-squared critical value we find. Okay, so we're on the chi-squared table, and we want to look up the alpha here of 0.05, so it'll be expressed here as 0.05. So these first uh, three, or sorry, first five columns here are actually for values that are quite large. So these numbers would be way on the left-hand side of the curve. So we're going to move on to the second page of the table, and on that second page we'll see values more akin to what we want to find. So when we look at the 0.05 position here, in this one, and we look at two degrees of freedom, we find the answer 5.99147. Okay, so we basically find 5.991. It has a few more decimal places, but that's not necessary here, so we'll just leave it at 5.991. That's your chi-squared critical value. Incidentally, the curve always starts at zero because this is a chi-squared value, right? The squared means it can never be negative. Okay, great, so we have this number, and now we're gonna compare our test stat to it. Where does it land? Well, 5.5 or 5.6 roughly falls before the rejection region here. In other words, this is gonna land somewhere over here on our number line. In other words, it's not in the rejection region, so we actually get to conclude that we do not reject the null hypothesis here. So we do not reject HO, and therefore we do not support HA. We do not support HA. So this is our pair of initial conclusions, and when we look at our claim, we see our claim is the same as HO, so we should word our answer according to what HO says, right? We should not pay attention to this phrase here. We should pay attention to this one because our claim is HO in this case, and so we're going to say, hey, we do not reject the claim. So the sample data does not allow us to reject the claim. So we cannot reject the claim. The sample data does not allow us to reject the claim. What's the claim saying, right? The claim is saying, hey, the same numbers of people want to go to Paris, Rome, London, right? Or the same proportion of people in your survey will want to go to Rome, Paris, or London. So we saw there was some increase it looked like for Paris, but it wasn't large enough to say that there's a significant difference between these three cities' preferences. And that basically uh, settles it. So that's the end of the problem.